So after three countries, 12 states, tens of thousands of miles, a bunch of weddings and everything in between, I finally reached two years of ownership with the ever reliable 5D Mark IV. Canon's last best, best DSLR, DSLR has served me fantastically over the two years I've owned it. The colors are fantastic, the resolution is awesome, and the build quality is just perfect. But it's now 2024, and that makes me wonder, is this really a good time to still be using an eight-year-old Canon DSLR? Should we, I don't know, just buy iPhone 15 Pros and just call it a day? Well, sounds good to me. Now wait just one moment. While it may be tempting to shun this camera into the ever-growing dreaded Canon camera graveyard, it might actually still be a good pickup this year. The 5D Mark IV is a solid camera, physically and figuratively. Its build quality is spot on. After two years of traveling, running around, driving cross country, all of that, and it's held up with not even a scratch. And its grip just gives me that classic photographer feel. I know that sounds a little silly, but it actually encourages me every time I pick up this camera. I mean, you're really gonna tell me this is more fun than this? It's a solid camera figuratively because, because it, it just works. works and operates beautifully. Still, after two years, I've yet to take a bad photo with this. Its resolution is just perfect for prints and cropping if necessary. It's a 30 megapixel sensor, which isn't the highest, but every one of those 30 megapixels is filled with tremendous and sharp quality. I've been able to do amazing things with the colors on these raw photos, more than I have with any other camera in the past. I especially love working with this camera on weddings because I can confidently deliver high quality prints to my clients. I've often been able to save so many photos that have either been too dark or too bright. And the biggest thing is just, I've never had any major issues with it. But of course, even though this camera has treated me very well over the last two years, there's still a few things that give me pause if I had to buy it again. First of all, it's the lenses. Now, this could also be a positive. You may already have a great group of lenses ready to go, but if you don't, you're obviously gonna have to buy new lenses for this. Now, of course, everyone knows that's an extra cost with a camera, but 2024 is not really the best time to be starting off new with EF lenses, especially with Canon committing to RF for the future and beyond. Second thing, is the grip in the body. Now, I know I was just raving about it before, but especially now with, you know, all the smaller options they have nowadays, this can feel a little bit older and bulky. You might prefer something that's a little bit more lightweight or has a flip out screen. You don't have to lie about it. I get it. The third thing and the most obvious is it's just older technology. There's no electronic shutter. There's no mirrorless body. It just doesn't stack up tech wise to the newer cameras that are out. But eventually the things this camera is lacking in tech wise are gonna be the absolute standard. And lastly, the raw files out of this camera are quite large, just like my cat. You are. Having enough data, oh, goodbye. Having enough data available for all day shoots such as weddings can be a bit of a challenge, especially when you're factoring in duplicates and backups, which you definitely should be. You absolutely do not want to risk losing not even one photo. Not even one. You're gonna need a healthy fleet of SD and CF cards. This camera is great for that because it has a slot for each of those. And I highly suggest always doing duplicate recording to them. It's really saved my butt a lot of times. And not to mention plenty of hard drive space as well in cloud storage space for editing and archiving. I mean, each raw photo of this camera can be up to 40 megabytes. And I know that doesn't sound a lot, but think about if you're shooting 10,000 photos on a wedding day, that's 400 gigs right there. And remember, you're gonna be shooting duplicates. You're gonna be making backups, cloud storage for archiving. It can really be a lot in the end. And if you're doing that full time, and then you're talking about, you know, 20 to 30 weddings per year. I can't do the math right now, but that's just an astronomical amount of data you're gonna need. Now, obviously, if you are already doing this professionally, you should currently be investing in a variety of storage options. So now it's the dreaded question once again, should you buy this camera for video? In my previous video, that answer was no in most cases. Now I would change that to no in all cases. There are just way too many better video alternatives out there. You cannot remotely justify getting this camera in 2024 just to shoot video with it. If you are considering getting this camera, you have to go in with a photography first mindset because that's what this camera is best suited for today. If you are already doing photography in this camera and you wanna dabble into video, 
obviously you don't have to buy a whole nother camera for that. That's all I have to say about that. So to buy or not to buy, that is the question. If you're already gone mirrorless, they'll go back. If you're on a different brand like Nikon or Sony, considering switching or adding Canon to your lineup, I go with the RF route instead. However, if you already have an existing fleet of high quality EF lenses, you don't have to go and break the bank for an upgrade. This is a perfect option for that. Maybe you're a Canon videographer looking to get into photography. Yeah, great choice. Or maybe you're looking for a second camera for your photography jobs, great option. If you're a beginner photographer and this is your first camera purchase, maybe not. I mean, you can get it if you want to, but there are a lot of other cheaper options out there to start off with. The only way that I could buy this camera again in 2024 is if I picked it up used or refurbished or at a discount or something. Its base price for a new model is just a little too steep for me to justify for a camera like this that's been out for so long. But luckily, since it's been out for so long, there's likely to be a lot of options for used and refurbished models of this camera. Even though it's a bit of an older model now, I can confidently say this is the best photography camera I've ever used. If you buy it and you know what you're doing, you will have major success with this camera. All the real reasons to buy or not to buy mostly come down to the cost and the gear associated with it. If you have $1,500 to $2,000 in your budget and don't want to overthink things, go ahead and get the camera. But if you're an overthinker like me, you'll want to really consider how much you want to spend, what other types of gear that you have and where the industry is going as a whole. Every year that passes is a year closer to this gem becoming obsolete. But once again, we have not hit that year. The 5D Mark IV continues to be a powerful workhorse camera, and it will be still for many years to come. What's been your experience with this camera? Are you thinking about getting it yourself? And if you want more camera and gear reviews, editing tutorials, all that fun stuff, be sure to like and subscribe for all my BTS content on this channel. In the next video, I'm gonna talk about my new lighting setup that I have here and the new gear that I use with it. Until then, break a lens, my friends. Don't actually do that.